8.09. Yeah, navigating the world of parenthood, never easy. And there are some things that are tougher than others, some conversations that maybe you're putting off. So we've brought in Dr. Sharon Thompson with some recommendations that could clear up some of the questions you may ha be having about, I don't know, like when to talk to your kids about sex or maybe went to uh, leave the pediatrician and take them to a more grown-up doctor. She's filling in the blanks for us. Good morning, Arizona. It is 8-12 and your health watch this morning is parents. We often wonder, are we doing things right? We need a pat on the back and some guidance, right, every now and again uh, to know what, we're, what we need to be doing at the right time. So Dr. Sharon Thompson is joining us this morning um, to help us through some of the maybe trickier uh, moments of parenting, a couple of the things that we might want to address in a timeline fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. good morning to you. We good were just morning. giggling because I was sharing with you, even during college, I was still seeing the pediatrician who I had seen since birth and she was actually consulting me on my college applications um, in you know with the with the trains and the little pictures of you know bumblebees in the office so that might have not been the best thing you know once you find a doctor that you like and you can trust it's hard letting go I needed that advice from her exactly. on a number of matters exactly and so pediatricians are well versed in a broad range of subjects <laughs> yeah. including college applications mm -hmm. and it is hard for parents sometimes to sort through mm -hmm. you know which doctor to call for which issues I get patients asking me about their babies and I have to tell them I know nothing about babies once they come out of you. <laughs> but I can give you some guidance on how to navigate okay. um, your kid's childhood. And I think that there's some things, health things are, are easier, medical issues, but then there are the issues around questions that your child asks, mm -hmm. about body parts, right. about that, that can get more touchy. And my Biggest piece of advice for parents is be open and honest with your kids. Okay. Regardless, when the two-year-old says, Bobby has something different than I have, acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that there's differences in anatomy. And the beautiful thing about children is they take in what they can and they leave the rest aside. Right. So you can give a 20-minute diatribe and your child will <laughs> run away just thinking pee-pee. Okay. <laughs> They're very simple that and way. And you hear doctors saying uh, a lot, it's great if you can start using the appropriate terms for the Absolutely. body parts. And you, that way there's no confusion as they have questions yes. or need to express themselves about whatever And I recommend issues. when you're teaching your kid nose and ears mm -hmm. and eyes, don't shy away from penis right. and vulva mm -hmm. because those are body parts. Make it easy and simple and non-controversial to your child. Don't right. create embarrassment where there is none. Because we all know two-year-olds don't get embarrassed. <laughs> no, no, they sure don't. Um, but we've got a couple of uh, little bits of advice here, too, uh, for the age ranges to have mm -hmm. the talk about their bodies Absolutely. or about in what ways that they may understand where babies come from, etc., and some of the changes that their bodies will go through. So, exactly. So we handle it naturally. Exactly. And those questions tend to come at different times. We all know the toddlers ask about body parts. Mm -hmm. How is Jimmy different from Susie? And at five, six, they start pointing to parts on your body mm -hmm. and asking questions. And it's perfectly fine to answer those questions because, like I said, kids will only take in what they can. Okay. We all remember in horror the songs that we used to jam to when we were 10. And now we look back and the lyrics are so inappropriate. <laughs> but at 10, we had no idea, right? right yeah. We're You're like, innocent. Is that what I was singing? So you feel free to explain to your kids when they ask questions because they take in what they can, they leave the rest of Okay. Them. So what about mm -hmm. that doc doctor change? Um, sure. at, at what point does, does this say a girl need to be starting to see a gynecologist? I mean, that seems like a big step. So things have changed quite a bit. If your daughter is having no problems, mm -hmm. she can actually hold off on going to a gynecologist until she's 21. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yes, because there's no need for a gynecologic exam. Yeah. Okay. And if her pediatrician is being appropriate to her growth and mm -hmm. answering her questions about her changing body mm -hmm. and periods and, you know, puberty and adolescence, then it's fine for her to stay with her pediatrician. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like there's a mismatch between mm -hmm. what her needs are and what the pediatrician is offering, then you can transition her to a gynecologist and her teens. It seems like as a parent, you'd really want to rely on, on that doctor and have a, a regular, consistent Absolutely. relationship so that maybe so they valuable. can answer some of these questions yes. that maybe as a mom or dad, we're not comfortable answering. Absolutely. So does that mean giving them privacy with the doctor or staying in the room for the conversation? I'm glad you raised the point about privacy. At some point, even if your child doesn't ask you to, and they very well may ask you, you want to exit the room okay. and allow the pediatrician to ask your child or to um, elicit information from them that they may be uncomfortable okay. sharing with you. Not because they're doing anything you wouldn't want them to do, but just kids get shy. We all yeah. know around 12 or so, mm -hmm. they
they start getting very guarded about their bodies okay. and about their privacy. So at that pediatrician visit, just give your child five minutes in the room with the pediatrician to maybe talk about some things. That and I know bottom line, mm -hmm. Dr. Thompson, you really wanted parents to take away. They will have questions. They will get that information somewhere. Make it come from you and your household Absolutely. and the way that you're comfortable Especially with it. Especially now in the age of cell phones. Yes. Cell phones are movie production studios and they're porn video right. studios. So make sure that you talk to your child, that they get their information from you because it's so easy to get it from either their own cell phone, which most of them have, or their friend's cell phones. Dr. Thompson, thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate oh, you're it. Welcome. Gina?